Hi you guys, we're back again, can you believe it? Oh my god, we're actually doing the YouTube thing. So exciting. <laughs> so today I wanted to chat to you about daily practice, or regular practice, it doesn't have to be daily, and injecting more magic into your life. So this is not something you have to do, but I know that many of us have that desire to feel as though we are living a magical life, to feel as though we are practicing regularly and feeling really connected with our craft. And that's probably what it is right there, is we want to feel connected to our craft. So the best way to feel that connection, in my experience, is to have something that you do regularly. So this builds up confidence and it builds up a deep connection to your craft. And it also, it gives you a space to go to when, when you don't really feel like doing a thing or when you're really low, when your energy is low or when your um, mental health isn't good or when life is just doing its thing and things become overwhelming. If you've got simple core things that you do or what I recommend is one core thing if you have the one core thing that you do it gives you a space of grounding it gives you a space to come back to and find that stability in your craft and to feel as though you are connected in those times so I think this is something that uh, it's definitely been a key for me in my own craft and my own practice to um, feel all of those things, to feel grounded in it, to feel connected, and to also grow in my own craft as well. So I'm going to talk to you today about, or give you a bunch of ideas for simple things that you can do in your daily, weekly, monthly, whatever practice. I recommend choosing one thing and doing it every single day. If you choose something that's really simple and really quick to achieve, then you can do it on those days that you feel like shit, okay? And that is the key right there. So I know many of us, we want this huge elaborate practice, you know, we want to light candles and incense, we want to do all these rituals and do spell work like every day or like, you know, pretty regularly or whatever. We have all these huge ideas of what we'd like our practice to look like. but we don't do those when we are feeling terrible, when we are low spirits, you know, or energy is low, our mental health is not good, or when we're just busy. When life happens and all the things are happening, if we've got kids, if we've got work, if we've got whatever, and all the things are going on, we then feel like a failure if we don't achieve all of our 20 different things that we want to do in our practice, which is why it's really important to have that like one, maybe two key things that we do that we can fall back on in those crazy times. So with the things that I am going to share with you today, it depends on what your beliefs are and what your spirituality is behind your magic, what your tradition is and religion and all that kind of stuff. So your mileage will vary with the, um, the suggestions that I give to you today, but I just wanted to put out a bunch of really simple ones out there. Again, I recommend you choose one if you don't have anything in your practice right now. Maybe some of these, uh, maybe you already have a core practice and you know you want to add to it a little bit, like give a little extra to your craft, maybe just add in something every week as well. I'm going to share with you what I kind of, or some of the things that I do in my own craft as well. They're in this kind of list. So let's get started with number one. Now the first thing is giving offerings. This is where I started with my daily practice, probably three years ago now or something, maybe it's been a bit longer, I'm not sure. So offerings are a really amazing way to connect in with spirit. So if you have a deity that you work with, if you work with angels, if you work with the Fae, if you work with ancestors, like whoever it is that you work with, if there's some kind of entity or other being or, you know, if your spirituality kind of goes that way, <laughs> then offerings are a really great way to connect in, to feel connected and to start building a strong relationship with that spiritual uh, being as well. So a great one that I started with was water. It's basically free and it's so simple. So all it is, is I would get a glass of water. It was actually kind of a little, just this pretty little bowl thing that I found at a charity store many years ago. And I would fill that up with water every day, just from the tap. And I'd put it on my altar. That's how I started. Fill it up, 
put it on the altar. I would leave it there for the day, then the next morning I would come back, I would take the little bowl, I'd pour it out, and I'd fill it up, and I'd put it on my altar. That's it. That's how I started. That's as simple as it needs to be. Now, after a few months, I would start adding in a little prayer with this. So, you know, I would just spend that time to actually um, share what I was grateful for. It's a really great excuse for doing some gratitude work and we will talk about gratitude as well. But I would just spend that time saying a little prayer. Thank you for today. Thank you that the sun's shining today. Thank you that it's kind of windy today. Thank you that, you know, this morning I got to enjoy a really nice cuddle with my son or you know, whatever it was, just something really simple, right? And so this kind of opened me up to doing more in my craft, but again, it gave me that stability. So other offerings you can do are you can burn a stick of incense. So each morning you can come out um, to wherever it is that you burn incense and light an incense stick. Now, every time you give an offering, I do recommend that you just take a moment to just be mindful. To just kind of be centered and to say thank you. Gratitude is a really great way to start the day and a good way to connect with your spirit as well. Or just, you know, be like, say hello you know say hello to whoever the entity is um, and you can do this in a non-religious way as well so if you don't work with a deity or a spirit you can do this sort of thing maybe you wouldn't call it an offering I don't know it could be something else but just having that little core thing you can light a candle okay that's another really nice thing so maybe you light a candle for five minutes or one minute or whatever it is like it doesn't have to be any particular length of time you fit it into your life that is totally fine you can do candles water incense um, alcohol is another really good offering as well so i do this one weekly so i give two of my deities alcohol each week so i simply pour them a little glass of their alcohol so each of them have a different alcohol um, that you know, I have eventually over time figured out like that's what I'm giving them, you know, that's what we do. So I'll give them a little bit of alcohol and then I leave it out for the week and then I will pour it out at the end. I actually reuse the alcohol, but that's kind of a whole other thing. I don't want to confuse anyone, but I, I use the alcohol for some other stuff in my magical practice. And then I will pour them a fresh one each week. Food is another really great offering. So you can put out some sweets, you can put out some cookies or a piece of cake or some bread or a meal or whatever it is. You can put out a little bit of food for them. It can be perishable or it can be something that is wrapped. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. My boys just quickly came home to grab a few things before heading off to the beach. <laughs> it's a busy Sunday. So, um, are we talking about offerings? So <clears throat> pretty well anything can be used as an offering. You can give physical tokens, okay, foods, drinks, whatever, perishable things. Just if it's something that you're going to be doing regularly, I would recommend perishable things. So things that don't last forever, like coins or stones or whatever, just because that's going to amass such a huge collection. And a lot of people, when they are giving a something, a physical item as an offering they will leave it with their deity or spirit or whatever like it belongs to that entity now kind of thing there's different ways to do it but that's kind of a you know generally speaking that's what a lot of people feel is kind of the thing to do so that's why something like you know incense candles food water you know whatever is kind of a good way to go just because it continually moves out and then you're not amassing this huge amount of stuff at your altar or wherever it is that you're giving the offering. Another idea for offering, but it's kind of a little bit different, I suppose, or it can be its own thing really, is devotional. So that can be um, a saying of prayers or just kind of speaking to, you know, the universe. Again, those particular deities or spirits or whoever that you work with, or you can do some reading as well. So Many people will like read out of the Bible if they're working with angels or saints or, you know, those kinds of deities or the deities in that pantheon, if you will. Or you could read, you know, poetry or, you know, a book about a certain deity to that deity or whatever it is or poetry that you write yourself or 
again, just speaking from your heart. So that sort of devotional is a really wonderful kind of way to connect in as well and just to carve out a little bit of space. So again, I mean, you could do this for one minute. You could literally spend one minute just doing this and then you're done. You might spend five minutes, you might spend 10 minutes. Some people will spend a lot longer, but it only needs to be a short amount of time. Again, the key here is keeping it simple so that on your worst day, you can get this thing done. And on the days where you feel like you want to do more, do more. That's awesome. But keeping it simple, the core thing is simple. Like if I only spend one minute reading this poem, then I get a tick for the day. You know, that's awesome. And that's kind of the way that you will build up your confidence moving forward. Number two idea for daily practice is doing a tarot oracle or some other kind of divination for the day. So um, you'll see this a lot in tarot kind of spheres or whatever, but people will pull a card of the day. And this is something that I really like to do. I've gone through stages of doing with oracle. I prefer it with tarot. Some people prefer it with oracle, like whatever. Uh, but you could also do this with bones, with scrying, with pendulum, any kind of divination, doesn't matter. Bibliomancy, whatever it is, right? But just spending that time to connect in and just get in tune with spirit and kind of getting into that space where you are listening. Another really nice way to do divination every day actually is with tea leaf reading too, with tassiomancy or tassiography or however you say it, there's many different ways. Well, not many, but there's several different ways you can say it. So actually just drinking a, a little cup of tea in the morning, if you're a tea drinker, if you like that kind of thing, you can do this with coffee grounds as well. So you would have loose tea or loose coffee in a cup, ideally a bowl shaped cup, and you would drink that and then interpret the symbols in the cup. Perhaps we will talk about that moving forward. I've got a couple of really great books that I enjoyed on that topic, which are a really good um, introduction into that kind of divination as well. So doing a little divination um, in the morning or in the evening, each day or each week, again, whatever it is, but that's a really nice way to get regular practice in as well. The third simple way to add more magic into your life and to feel like you are living a more magical life is to spend, say, two to five minutes at your altar. So if you have an altar space, if you have a special little spot set up. Now, when I first began, I literally, my altar was a candle holder and a rock. That was my altar. And I would kind of pull them forward when I was doing spell work or anything like that and kind of to have devotional space. And then I kind of put them back, you know, where they were because I was living with people that I couldn't have an altar with at the time and that's kind of how I've operated um, at the beginning of last year when I wasn't able to have my altar my big sort of set up as well so wherever it is that you alter <laughs> wherever it is that you feel there is a little bit of sacred space just spending some time in that space so, you know, you can potter around that space, just kind of move things around, look at things, touch things, play with things, you can light a candle, some incense, kind of just be in your meditative or magical space. This is a great spot to do any kind of devotional or prayer as well. Just spending that time, just thank you for the day. Ask for help with whatever it is that you've got coming in your day. You know, if you've got a job interview or it's just work, you know, please help me to be strong today. Please help me to deal with customers well. And you know, whatever it is that you need a little bit of extra help with, this is a really good space to ask. Also a really good excuse to do a little bit of meditation. So again, just a couple of minutes at your altar space, or you can do some journaling as well. I really like journaling. I don't actually have this as part of my regular practice at the moment, although it has certainly been in the past and I keep thinking about it actually because I really do enjoy journaling. I just haven't been out of, I haven't, sorry, not been able to. I haven't made the time to fit that in yet, but journaling is a really fantastic way to connect in with yourself and to connect in with spirit as well. So I find with journaling, like if I've got stuff that I'm trying to work out, that's usually when I journal a lot, when there's a lot going on in my head, you know, I'll write down my questions. Like I'll write down whatever it is that I want to know. And just over time, I kind of revisit and I go back to them. And sometimes I get little insights and whatever it is, or I just honestly, sometimes it's just a way to vent, you know, you just vent about the things or whatever it is like it's just it can be a really nice ego massage as well <laughs> so I would recommend um, journaling as well and it's it kind of gives it a little extra something if you do it in your altar space too the fourth idea super simple this one for living a more magical life by adding little bits of magic in with your morning tea or coffee 
adding a little bit of magic into that. So as you stir, you can add in a little incantation. So you can just say, as I stir my coffee, I also stir in strength for the day. I'm saying strength a lot, or you know, more love or whatever it is. It's good if you can get specific. So if you can say specifically what you want, rather than just like love in general, or strength in general, or creativity in general, you know? Creativity for what, you know? So put your specific incantation in as as you stir, just focus on what it is that you want and you can say it out loud or in your head. Now I did write down this uh, cute little uh, chant I suppose that I found on Pinterest and this is from at solitary.witch I assume on um, Instagram. So, but I found it on Pinterest. So this is a really nice one that you can actually do while you are stirring your tea or coffee and I'll put it down below as well so you guys can see it if you like it. But it says, give me the strength to face my day no matter what the universe throws my way, no matter what this day is to become, give me the best possible outcome. And it's just like a really simple little chant, which is a beautiful way to kind of set that intent for your day. And it's so easy, like just stirring and saying a thing, you know, so you could say this out loud or you could say it in your head. Like if, you know, if you're around people that you can't be magical with, like it's easy to do in your head as well, just as you're stirring and focusing on that. Now the fifth thing, and this is what I started my magical practice with really, is grounding and centering. So I'm going to do a video on this at some point just because um, I found it really difficult to point people to videos that show you how to ground and center. It's like such a simple thing and I think I've found it embedded in other videos before but I just want a really simple snapshot, here's how you ground, Here's how you center, just to be able to send people to. So if you know of any videos like that, let me know. But um, yeah, I'm thinking of making a video. Anyway, so <laughs> grounding and centering. So I used to do this outside when the weather's good, when the weather permits, it's great to get outside. Just stand on the ground and you connect your energy down into the earth. So just focusing on your body. And I like to imagine that there are energetic roots coming out of all of the parts of me that are touching the earth and growing down into the earth. And I see them going down as far as I can, down, down, down. And sometimes I'll imagine going all the way down to the core of the earth and like wrapping around and then drawing up power and energy up through the roots. <sighs> and let me tell you, it's so grounding. And then drawing up my energetic roots once I'm done. Now centering is what I imagine that as is like um, energy tendrils coming off me everywhere, right? So anytime I'm thinking about anything or worrying about anything or anywhere my attention is, I've got an energy tendril going that way. And so what I do with centering is I imagine myself drawing in those tendrils and tucking them in, either drawing them sort of straight in or just tucking them down into you know, my body. And that's a really good way to center and just breathing and just fully bringing your attention into yourself. That's a really great way to center. So grounding and centering is a fantastic way to get started in the morning or honestly at any time. It only needs to take a couple of minutes again and it's just, it will give you that strong foundation, just bringing you fully into yourself to more mindfully move forward into your day. The sixth thing is kind of along the same vein as the last one, and this is something that I, I used to do together with the two, but it's doing an energy bubble, energy protection. So essentially shielding. So um, there are so many different ways to do this. One of the ways that I used to really like to do this and something that I connected with when I was still like a baby pagan <laughs> was I would imagine after grounding and centering, I would imagine vines growing up from the ground all around me and then they would sort of enclose and just be this I can still see it right now be this um oh I, I don't know I feel like there's like a movie or something but you know like an enclosed beautiful tree egg thing around me protecting me and keeping me safe I've heard from other people they've seen a castle around them like with thick stone walls like nothing's getting through another one that I really like is just simply a light bubble so imagining again I like to pull it up from the earth so pulling it up beginning at my feet and all around me just like this either a sphere or an egg shape of light. So I particularly like blue light. Um, I feel that the blue is quite protective for me. Um, that's the color that I use for 
any sort of protective light that I'm doing but it can be whatever color that it is for you but just again imagining that coming up and going around you let me know if you guys want me to do a video on that I think there are quite a few out there I'm not sure but maybe I'll just chuck that into the grounding and centering video as well now the seventh simple practice is to work your energy, is to practice manipulating energy. So I went through this with my spellcasters the other day. Most of you probably will have heard it if you've been around the magical sphere for any length of time. But if you're brand new, this is a fantastic way to build up your energy for spell work and all that sort of stuff. Like, I mean, energy is, I mean, that's what witchcraft is all about really, right? Is, well, I mean, there's, you know many philosophical debates, but you know, energy. <laughs> so what you do is you get your hands, rub them together for a second, get it nice and warm, and then just slowly pull them apart. Now, as you do, sense the power and the, the pulsating energy that is happening between your palms, right? And you just draw that out slowly and you feel that energy. What we're trying to do is to create an energy ball. Okay, and you do it as, as far as you can. And when you sort of start to feel, oh, like maybe you kind of lost it, you can't feel it as much anymore. Take it back to the spot where you can feel it and draw it out again. And as you focus on that area, it will grow. Okay, and it might take you some time before you can get like a sphere of energy. But if you practice this every single day, you'll be able to grow like a huge energy ball, which you can then pour into your spell work that you're doing or you can do different things with it. you can do protection with it you can send it to other people as healing or love or whatever it is that you want to do if you are just creating energy balls and you're not doing anything with them you can sort of suck them back into yourself so you just imagine that it goes back into you okay um, that's a really great practice for magic in and of itself you can sit before your altar or wherever it is that you want you can do it in bed doesn't matter but it's a really great practice and like it'll get you humming like I'm feeling hummy now because <laughs> just even doing that but yeah it's a really great way to connect in with your magic every single day now the eighth and final thing that you can do to live a more magical life is to read a few pages of a magical text. So this is something that I've discovered over the last few years that I actually quite like to do and it is part of my morning routine. But I'll have some kind of magical book that I'm enjoying reading. So at the moment I'm reading a book called Voodoo Hoodoo or Hoodoo Voodoo. I can't remember which it is right now, but I'll show you guys anyway. You'll be looking at it right now, I'm sure. So I'm reading this book at the moment and what I'll do is I'll just spend, it depends how much time I have in a day. I love to spend half an hour if I can, but that's like if I've got, you know, plenty of time and mental energy for it. But even just a few minutes, I'll read a page or two of a magical text. And it's just something that like I'm, you know, I'm enjoying learning about or it's just something something that I'm enjoying reading like this book right now is like I just I'm really enjoying it so um, but also it's teaching me at the same time and it's connecting me into more magic and it's helping me grow in different ways so it's revealing different things to me as I read it this is a really wonderful practice as well especially if you struggle with reading non-fiction books so this is something I used to really struggle with and we'll talk more about books in future because I'm obsessed with reading <laughs> I love my books but I've trained that into myself as well I didn't used to be good at reading especially non-fiction so if you break it right down and just say I'm going to read a page a day or I'm going to read three pages a week or you know whatever it is it's another really wonderful little practice that you can add in and it can be a cornerstone of your practice as well if you want it to be so just reading a page or two a day will help you get through those magical texts that you would like to read and it will also build up your ability to actually read non-fiction as well if that's something that you struggle with and I did say that was the final thing, but there was one other thing we were going to talk about gratitude. <laughs> so gratitude in general is the most fantastic cornerstone of any spiritual practice. It has absolutely changed my life just spending a few minutes each day being grateful. So I do this in several different ways in my own life and there are many other ways that you can do it. So something you can do is when you put out a glass of water as I mentioned or if you light an incense or light a candle or whatever you just spend a minute in gratitude. Just say some things that you're grateful for. Thank you so much for the weather today. Thank you for these specific people in my life. As specific as you can be is best with gratitude. So 
being specific about things rather than saying, oh, I'm so grateful for love in my life. Like, that's awesome as well. But then going a little deeper, like what exactly about love are you grateful for or who are you grateful for in, you know, feeling that love? Maybe it's your amazing cat, you know, that always comes and rubs up against your legs in the morning and just makes you feel loved, you know, like, oh, it's so wonderful. Like filling yourself up with that feeling is powerful for manifestation, for any kind of magic that you're doing and just for feeling good in general, for attracting more awesome into your life the more you put out gratitude the more awesome will come your way guaranteed it will take time but I 100% guarantee you it will happen it will shift your energy in big ways so I recommend doing that so with a little offering just at your altar you know just spend a minute saying I'm grateful you can journal so you can decide however much you're gonna do you can write you know sorry I'm tripping over my words here Three things that you're grateful for each day. That's a really nice thing to do. You can have a gratitude jar. So you'll write down something that you're grateful for every day and pop it in the jar. You could maybe journal a page. You might decide like I want to journal a whole page about the things that I'm grateful for and come up with all these different things, you know, that you are thankful for in your life. Something that me and my family do is when we sit down to have dinner together, we take it in turns to say things that we're grateful for. So each of us will do that. We actually do a thing now where we say, What's something you learnt today? Or what's something I learnt today? What's something I did to make someone else happy today? And what's something that someone else did to make me happy today? And we go around and we do that. And it's just been a really good exercise, especially for our son. So to just kind of start thinking that way. Uh, but that's a really nice family activity as well. But there are lots of other ways to do gratitude. And I would love to hear from you guys if you do gratitude in a different way. Let me know what you guys do. Because I think that gratitude is like one of the most powerful magics that we can do 100%. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some ideas. I've talked about plenty today, but remember, choose one thing that you are going to make the cornerstone of your practice if you don't have one already. If you do, you might like to add more. But have it so that on your worst days, if you do this one simple thing that just takes you a minute, then you're having a good day. You get a big tick, a pat on the back. Your practice is awesome, right? This is just, it's going to be so powerful for you moving forward. It's going to give you so much confidence and it's going to really connect you in with your magic and give you that really powerful, solid base to move forward in. It will let you know that like you are... You know, so many of us have this problem where we feel like we're not witchy enough, we're not magical enough, we're not spiritual enough. But if you do this and you, you know, keeping it simple enables you to actually feel like you're achieving that, which will give you confidence to do more and grow more in the future. You won't be berating yourself, belittling yourself. You'll be like, yeah, we're doing an awesome job. And you'll keep doing that awesome job for yourself, whatever that looks like for you. Thank you so much for watching. I would absolutely love to hear your ideas of simple ways that we can add more magic into our life. What do you do in your world? What does your magical practice look like? Those simple things that make up your practice or just other ideas that you've seen. You know, people come in to videos like this and they read the comments. They want to know what other people are doing. So please share your ideas down below. It helps everyone to learn and to grow and to give us more ideas so that we can all, you know, further enhance our magical knowledge and um, you know find those particular little things that really make us glow in our own practice because it's always different for everyone so please share your ideas and your knowledge below I would love to see and I know other people would love to see as well thank you so much for hanging out with me you guys I deeply appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in the next video I'm sending you so much love and many many blessings